All right, today we're going to talk about while loops. Uh, a couple things we're going to briefly go over is what is a while loop, how does it work, some syntax, and a little bit of code example. The while loop can be used like the for loop, with the difference that the breakoff condition can be any Boolean expression. This means you indicate the condition when the loop is going to execute. If the expression evaluates as true, we will continue to run within the loop. If the expression returns a false condition, then we will exit the loop. If the expression is already false, when we first evaluate the condition, then we will never execute with inside the loop. Now, if the Boolean expression never evaluates to a value of false, then the instructions are repeated endlessly. This, of course, can cause runtime problems as well as preventing other parts of your code from running. You can look at the while loop and the repeat loop as being more powerful than the for loop. This is because you do not need to know the number of cycles your loop needs to execute beforehand. However, if you know the number of cycles your loop is going to take beforehand, it is preferable to use a for loop as it is impossible to get endless loops. This is a diagram showing the behavior of the while loop for the given code below. Before we talk about the diagram, we should talk about the code structure of the while loop. The while loop has three key words. The first is while, the second is do, and the third is end while. The word while starts the while loop, the word end while ends the while loop, and the word do separates our expression from our main body of code that lives with inside the while loop. In this case, our main body is nothing more than a variable called iCount, and it's being set to itself. So in other words, each time this loop executes, the value inside iCount will climb by a value of 1. Let's see how this works with the diagram. We first start down towards the expression or the condition. If the condition is true, we fall into the body of the code. Within the code, we can see that we are going to take the value that's in I count, add it to 1, and stick it back into the value of I count. We then loop back up and evaluate the expression again. We continue to do this loop as long as the expression remains true, at which time that the expression no longer is true, and re returns a false condition, we then exit the while loop. All right, for our first example, let's say I count equal to value of 90 before we started the while loop. The end result would be that the while loop would functionally loop through 10 times before exiting. And for our second example, let's say the variable I count equal to 500 before we started the while loop the end result would be that the while loop would never execute the code with inside the while loop. It would immediately exit the loop. This is how your code might look in Machine Control Studio. For our given example, you will see two windows here. The top window is where the variables are declared. Here you can see the variable I count. It is of type int and has no default values. Because it has no default values, it could be anything on PowerUp, but most likely a value of zero. And the window below is where your code goes, and you can see our example for the while loop. Here is another example of how you might use a while loop. In this code below, I'm using a while loop to produce a small delay. This while loop is in a function called wait time as you can see by the name here. Wait time returns a type boolean. It has one input and the input variable is called delay time. This variable is of type time. A time variable is like 4 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, a second, a minute, an hour, whatever time an individual wants. This function also has one internal variable of type end time. How the function works is 
simple. End time is equal to the current time plus a delay time. The delay time is passed by the user. Let's say the user wants 4 milliseconds. Then the end time is the current time plus 4 milliseconds. The while loop will look at the current time and see if the current time is less than the end time. If it is, it will continue to loop over this code. The moment the current time is equal to or greater than the end time, it will exit out of the while loop. The function then sets the wait time equal to true. If you like this video and would like me to keep making more of them, please subscribe. Also, if there is any particular topic you would like me to cover, please put it in the comments below.